Good evening. We're now going to start off with the educational session. Today, Captain Nisri Ramdanu will be conducting the educational session. She goes to the Westminster School. She studies in the ninth grade and she's 14 years old. Last year, she won second place for international speech at Dershi Jade Club level. She dreams to become a successful lawyer and she wants to study in England. Her educational session today will be on storytelling. Please give a loud round of applause to Gavne Tisri Randanu for storytelling. Now, you can, there are two different 
different ways. You can mug up your story and learn it line for line, but you'll sound quite robotic when you present it. So the best way and is to say it's from the heart. So you have to know your story like the back of your hand. You should know what's going to happen in the future or whatever. So even if you forget a certain line that you're saying, you can continue speaking with your own words. Try them out several times on your own first. This basically means take a mirror, pull it up in front of you, and speak to yourself. It may seem funny, but it's not, because it is you and only you that knows how well you've done in the end. So when you say your story to yourself, exactly the same way you're going to be saying it here, you know whether it's up to your standard. You know if you have enough facial features, uh, facial expressions, or hand gestures, or anything like that. You are the judge of your own presentation. Don't talk the form. This is basically where most Galileans get it wrong. Performance is not something, it doesn't mean, you know, to play a song and dance and sing around and all that. Performance can mean something as basic as just walking across the stage and, you know, expressing your characters using hand gestures. So it's very important to express yourself in general. Practice makes perfect. We should never think that just because we know the story, it's a childhood story we listen to over and over again, that we're going to be flawless at this. Because even the best speakers had so much practice again and again before they came and they presented their thing, presented their role, and that's what made them memorable, because they practiced. What to look out for when speaking? Golden pauses for effect. Pauses are one of the most beautiful devices a speaker can use. Pauses, it's a phrase that I came up with myself, but pauses are the representatives of punctuation marks. When a punctuation mark is unable to come up here and show itself to an audience, a pause would come in its place and it would mean the exact same thing. Pauses can mean so many different things, from a simple comma or a full stop, or it can mean that you're about to say something great. World famous speakers such as Mahatma Gandhi, uh, John Kennedy, and Martin Luther King, their speeches became so special and so memorable from the small pauses that we, they made. So when Martin Luther King gave a speech, Instead of saying, I have a dream, that one day, he said, I have a dream, that one day. That small gap in between a single sentence can mean so much and it can deliver so much emotion. Voice modulation. It's pointless coming here and just talking on and on and on in the same monotonous tone. You have to have voice variation to keep your people, in, to keep the audience interested. So, basically te telling a story is talking for a character who is unable to be there. So when you express, when you're telling a story, you should be able, when you're telling a story, you should express the character as if he or she was the one telling their story themselves. So voice modulation is very important. And you should talk according to the way the character would talk. If the character is feeling scared or worried or anything, you can speak really quickly in a high-pitched tone. Or if they're feeling happy, you can speak, you know, with a bounce to your voice and keep it interesting for everyone. Hand gestures and stage movement. This is where the acting part of storytelling comes into action. And it's very important because even though you express yourself using words, some people might not understand exactly what you're saying. So with a simple hand gesture or a facial expression, your message is conveyed so much clearer. And a person can actually visualize what you're saying. Facial expressions. This is one of the most important things because it's through your face the audience is looking directly into your eyes 
and your eyes can express so much feeling compared to any part, any other form of movement. So facial expressions are very important to convey emotion. Now I have an extract and I've chosen two great Gavliers to read that for me. The first Gavlier is Gavlier Tanya and she will be reading it out. So Gavlier Tanya. Just then, I saw a shadow in the reflection of the glass world across the room. I jumped up and looked around, but still nothing seemed suspicious, so I kept sodding through the papers, but with my heart pounding, I was ready to go for the dough on a moment's notice. Without warning, I felt a paper towel dragging on the back of my neck. I whipped my head around, and when I saw an apparently not so dead mummy standing over me, I jumped back and gasped. The mummy was at least six feet tall, towering over me, wrapped in something that seemed like gauze. I had no idea where he had come from. I didn't know where the glass doors of the cabinet shattered and crashed. Thank you, Gavli Tanya. Now, can I have Gavli Sandali reading out the extract? The very same extract. Just then, I speak. Just then, I saw a shadow in the reflection of the glass bolt across the room. I jumped up and looked around, but still, nothing seemed suspicious. So I kept sorting through the papers, but with my heart pounding, I was ready to go, go for the door on a moment's notice. Without warning, I felt a paper towel dragging on the back of my neck. I whipped my head or around and when I saw an apparently not so dead mummy standing over me, I jumped back and gasped. The mummy was at least six feet tall, towering over me. Wrapped in something that seemed like gauze, I had no idea where he had come from. Out of nowhere, the glass doors of a cabinet shattered, crashed. spread the same extract. Could you see a difference though? Yes. Can one of you tell me one of the differences you saw? Gali Shabir? Uh, Tanya said fast and she said slow. Okay. Any other, anyone else? Gali Yeah, uh, when Tanya was uh, reading, she, was, uh, she didn't have a lot of voice modulation. It was the same, same speed, same, uh, same pace. Uh, no pauses, but it, uh, in somebody's uh, speech, she had a lot of uh, voice modulation and yeah, different cases of golden pauses. Anyone else? Okay, just anyone else? Okay. Uh, Gavi, okay. <laughs> That's okay. Gavi, Okay, so uh, Tanya, she didn't use that much of descriptive <coughs> way of persuading to the audience. So, uh, and suddenly, what she, she described more and expressed the word more than it is. So, yeah, it's more of a description. Um, Gavli Tanya, she just read it in a monotone, whereas Gavli Sambali, she emphasized on certain words and also had those little pauses in between. Okay. Gavli, you finished? Okay. Tanya's, you know, the expert Tanya's reading, she, she was only talking it. However, in some ways, she was performing it. Okay, thank you, Gavlius. Just to say, Gavli Tan is an excellent speaker, and the only reason she spoke like that was because I asked her to, to prove a very special point. And I think everyone understood, understood the point. And the reason I said that was to prove that these little devices, I'd like to call them, when they used in a simple extract, the great difference they make. When you had, when you hear a person speaking in a monotone, you think, oh, they're so boring, I don't want to listen to them, and your mind drifts elsewhere. But when you hear a person, and, the, and you feel as if they're giving you direct eye contact, 
And when they're speaking with such energy in their voice, you're thinking, I want to listen to them, and I want to, I want to gain as much as I possibly can from the speaker. And that is why storytelling wouldn't be the same if you don't follow its rules. So I hope that you do well in all of your future roles, speak with enthusiasm, use as many of these descriptive and use as many of these devices as you possibly can, and I know that you all will shine in your future roles. Now, this is the end of the education session. But before I hand over to our Sergeant at Arms, Gyal Randano, there is a small announcement to be made.